Okay, so since so many people liked the last video of the Xbox One S gaming in 2024, let's do a comparison to the Xbox Series S, which is next-gen. Now, it's not as powerful as the Series X, but it's still next-gen. It can still play the same games as an X. So, do you really need an X unless you want to play 4K at like 120 hertz and have a disk drive? You don't really need an X if, you, if you're not after that. So, here we have the S. I'm going to be playing most of the same games as I, as I did on the One S, but unfortunately I cannot try all the same like GTA 5 for example, because GTA 5 is on a disc and there's no disc drive here. So without further ado, let's get into the video, shall we? Okay, so like I mentioned in the intro, I'm not able to play all the same games, but one of the games I can try on this console and the One is Call of Duty Warzone. Because this isn't a disc game, so you can play it on anything really. Well, anything that can actually handle it. So if I, right off the bat, not not only not oh my god, let me try this again. Not only does the game look better, it's it's higher frame rate even in the menus. Now, while we wait for a game, I'm gonna do a little bit of the firing range again because if you remember from the last video, if you watched it, I recommend you do. It's actually a <laughs> pretty good video, informative. Um, you will remember, if you saw it, how much worse even just the firing range looked and ran. Now this is running like a perfect 60 frames a second, no problem. Now, I could enable 120 hertz, but honestly, it's not going to make a difference because this TV doesn't support 120 hertz, so it really wouldn't make a difference. Same with YouTube. YouTube only supports up to 60 frames, so 120 hertz really not going to do anything. Now, I did mention that, I don't, actually I don't know if I did mention this. If I did mention it, I'm repeating it. If I didn't, well, now you're hearing it for the first time. This break. game is a lot soon. more intensive now than it used to be, even on Rebirth Island. As you can see, it is dropping a little bit of FPS, honestly, and this is Rebirth Island. Like, it's not, you know, it's not that hard to run, I guess, you know? I mean, now it is, but it never used to be. So, something they did with this whole remastered version really just killed the performance. So, until we get into the actual game, I'm going to pause it until we actually start dropping in and get into a real game, shall we? Okay, the pregame has finally ended. Now, if you remember, in this same cutscene on the 1S, if you saw the video, it was very choppy it kept freezing and it, it just it wasn't good the graphics weren't as as good either and as you can see is <laughs> no stuttering here that's the difference between a hard drive and an ssd sometimes hard drives can struggle to load in you know certain areas certain things but since this is an ssd there's really no issue here now i'm going to fly into the exact same spot as i did on the one which is control center land on a roof Try and get a kill. It's not gonna happen. But we're gonna run downstairs, same spot I was before. So so it's completely fair. And I didn't even get this far last time because well I died and then the <laughs> performance. Let's try and get a couple kills here, maybe, you know? So probably dead to this, right? Oh, wow. But anyways, as you can see, this game is running a million times better than, than than the one was. And not only is it running better, it's looking a lot better. So, if you want to play Warzone, and you don't have a whole lot of money, the Series S is definitely the way to go, as you can tell. Now, before I end it and go to the next game, I'm just going to mention one thing. As you just saw, Rebirth does, for some reason, perform worse, but the actual main battle royale map it actually runs better than rebirth so if you're all about if you're all about that regular battle royale you're not gonna have a problem now on that note let's go on to the next game all right next up we have fall guys and if you remember from the xbox one video you will remember me saying how this game took like five minutes to load or something stupid on the one s now this took about 30 seconds again what a massive difference hard drive and an SSD makes. Not only that, but just how much newer 
the architecture and everything is in general on the Series S because it is next gen. So that is just one advantage of next gen is much faster loading time and as you can see in the top right, quick resume. The one doesn't have that, only next gen has that. Now if you also remember when I tried Fall Guys on the one, it took a hot minute to load into these levels and uh, as you just saw on the Series S, it didn't take long at all. Now this game also has a little bit of input lag for some reason. Now I did mention input lag on the one and it, it was definitely worse because it was only 30 frames compared to it looks like 60. So I'm guessing it must just be a game thing with the input lag. It's nowhere near as bad but it's, it's still got input lag for some reason. I, I don't know what it is but there's definitely still input lag, but just nowhere near as bad. So I, I, I don't know what that's about, but it's, it's definitely playable and it's a solid 60 frames a second. Now, if you do remember, if you look closely on the one, there was definitely more rough edges, like less anti-aliasing on the one compared to the Series S, which makes sense, I mean, it's a lot older. But not, not only that, but the shadow distance was nowhere near as great, and the resolution of the shadows wasn't as good either. So, I mean, everything in general is just better on a Series S. I mean, I, I can't name one thing that's better on the One than the Series, besides maybe having a disk drive, but I mean, that's not necessarily a game breaker or anything. It's just something to keep in mind. So that being said, I think that's enough Fall Guys, I don't really have to play it for 10 minutes for you to get the point, <laughs> or me to get the point, but as you see it's perfectly playable. It's playable on the 1, but it's a lot better on the Series S. So with that being said, next game, shall we? Alright, next up we have City Skylines Xbox One Edition. So same game as the, the 1, same edition, same game, it's not the remastered version, same game, even the same exact save game as well. Now, wow, <laughs> this is a solid 60 frames a second. Now, if you remember, it was running at about 30 on the 1S and had very frequent dips, probably down into the 20s or even teens, especially when you get down low like this. Now, as you can see, getting like, real low to the ground, it's, it's not dropping at all. I mean, it's just a major difference. As you can see, it's running, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It's like perfect 60 frames a second. Now, I don't know. I don't know how my. Okay, no, never mind. I, I don't know if the capture card was doing it justice, but it looks like it is. It's like a solid 60 frames a second, even here here on the ground. And on the 1S, it was not. The 1S also had a couple stutters, like moving around like this. I think that was probably because of the hard drive just trying to load in stuff and all that. But as you can see, not a single stutter. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Nothing. Solid 60 frames a second, <sighs> just by looking at it. I don't have an FPS counter, but I mean, this is 60 frames a second. Even if I did have an FPS counter, it would say 60. But very solid, no dips, no nothing. So this is, again, very impressive for only $300, I believe the Series S is. So very, very impressed with the performance of this little thing. I, I think I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. If you're looking to get into any sort of any sort of gaming, if you want to get into the Xbox, you know, kind of the thing, or just gaming in general, you don't have enough money for a Series X or a PlayStation 5 or a gaming computer. This is definitely the way to go. Definitely the way to go. Wow, I'm having a really bad speech day, but the Series S is definitely the way to go if you're on a budget and you want to play some games. All right, next game. Only gonna do one more because that's same number I did with the one. Just to keep it fair, only doing four games. Alright, so next game is a brand new release called X Defiant. It's, some people call it a Call of Duty killer. Honestly, it's not a Call of Duty killer. I personally think it's just an, a competitor, not a killer, like some people put it. So, anyways, it's basically just a first person shooter game. You got deathmatch, you got hold the objectives, all that kind of stuff. It's just basically Call of Duty multiplayer, similar game modes. But a very different feel, very different, I guess, play style, you can call it. Now, 
X Defiant is a Series S slash X optimized game, like Call of Duty is and Fall Guys is. Now, can it run on the one? I don't know, considering it's a brand new release. And if it can run on the one, I highly doubt it. It'll run well or look good. Now, I've played this game a bit. Um, not not a whole lot, but I've played it a bit. So I kind of know how it works. I kind of know how to play it. And I can tell you now, <laughs> it runs pretty good and it looks pretty good too. Um, I mean, that's kind of not you know, surprising at this point. I mean, <laughs> it's next-gen console running on a... It's a next-gen game Occupy. Stay optimized nimble. for next-gen console, so... I, I sure hope it would run well on a next-gen console, but... Three, two, and as you can see, it looks... Five. Secure the capture zone. It looks Eliminate pretty good and it's running at a solid 60 frames a second. I've tried multiple times. I've tried grenades. I've tried I've, I've tried a bunch of things to try and get it to drop from 60 capture and it zone. just doesn't it just doesn't drop. I mean, it's it's crazy. It just doesn't drop. I mean, it's I've, I've played many different maps and all the maps Exactly the same performance. There's no. Can I jump over this? Yeah, this game is a little buggy. It's only a couple months old, so it's definitely uh, definitely got some work to do. But in its current state, it's definitely play okay. I didn't, didn't see that guy coming with a shotgun. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, this, this game is running perfectly fine. There's no there's, there's no complaints here at all. I mean, it's nothing bad about it besides I suck at the game because <laughs> you know I'm not really paying attention because I'm doing a video at the same time but I mean I don't really have to play a whole lot more probably honestly because as you can see it's running fine no FPS drops graphics are fine no questions you know no nothing really so with that being said this is uh let's move on to the final verdict slash thoughts whatever the hell you want to call it I suppose so what's my final verdict and opinion on the Series S? Now, I've owned the Series S for probably about a year now, so I've had some experience with it, you know, using it, knowing, yeah, you know what I mean. But I've not really, honestly, used it that much. And considering all of the views and likes and even subscribers I've gained on the Video Doom D1S, I figured I'd do it again on the Series S. So, I've mentioned this before, but I just can't stress it enough. This is the best bang for buck console you can buy right now. Even the Nintendo Switch is like the same price. I, mean, I don't know about the same price. It's very similar in price to this. Sure, the Switch is portable. Sure, the Switch can have detachable controllers and all that fancy crap. But if, if you want to play games, this is, this is the way to go. Now, the Steam Deck is also portable, but that's more expensive. But yet, performs worse? I really don't get how companies can sell some of these things for such high prices when I mean sure this isn't portable but you get a lot better gaming performance if you want a game on the cheap this is the way to go 100% way to go and if you like my controller stand uh, you know let me know I can do a video on this because why the hell not <laughs> but I mean you, you can't go wrong with the Series S. There's, I have nothing bad to say about it besides the lack of a disk drive. So if you want to play your disk games, like your Xbox One games, you have to play it on the One or get a Series X, which has a disk drive. Other than that, I, I really have no complaints. As you saw in the uh, previous clips here, I mean, every, every game is ran perfectly fine besides Warzone, but that game has issues. <laughs> It ran mostly perfect besides a couple frame drops, but it, it does that on PC even, so it's not really the console's fault. But, I mean, there's not really much else to say about it. You saw the clips, you heard what I had to say, and uh, yeah, that's that'll be about it. So with that being said, if you liked the video, be sure to give it a like, drop a comment if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything. Subscribe, share, and all that fun stuff. With that being said, see you in the next one.